Gary. Hey, how you doing? Great. Chad, good to see you all. Welcome to Goodall's Antiques today. Well, thank you. Come on, let's go in and see what he's got, Chad. Chad, uh, Mr. Goodall has this shop here in Middletown, Louisville, in Middletown, Kentucky. Uh, and he deals with a lot of Willet furniture. And we've come here today to learn about Willet and other high quality older furniture. Uh, this man knows all about it. So come on. Come on in and we'll learn <clears throat> together here. Chad, in this room, is everything in this room is cherry, is the Wildwood Cherry Collection. Now, Willett started in business in 1929. They were in business from 1929 all the way to 1962. Uh, they had a, a lot of different styles, but I would have to take to 1946 was kind of their heyday. World War II was just over. Everybody was getting home, starting families, and I hear the same stories over and over and over. People wanted to buy, at that time, quality furniture that they could use during their lifetime and be functional enough and quality enough to hand down to the next generation. And I hear that over and over and over with uh, people that bought Willett and why they bought it. Well, what I start to say, in 1946, Willett had a permanent furniture display in the Furniture Mart in Chicago, Illinois. That's where all the furniture retailers come every year to order their furniture for the whole year. And Willett introduced this particular line in 46, and they call it the Wildwood Cherry Collection. And when they introduced this line, they had the owner of the company, the sales manager there at a desk, taking orders. And the, the line started at their desk, went out the room, down the hall, circled the building. They called in every salesman from Louisville they had. And at that particular time, they got as far as a year to two years behind in production. And they became the largest manufacturer of solid wood furniture in the whole country. And they enjoyed that from 46 until about 1953. But every year they made this Wildwood Cherry collection from 46 till they went out of business in 62. And every year this was their largest seller. Now, they introduced different lines uh, of furniture in uh, different periods of uh, years. They introduced the uh, Transitional, which is a mid-century modern, Trans East, another one. Countryside is kind of a, a browner finish, uh, more colonial look, and they just had several different collections. But every year, this was always their best seller. I believe you have some pictures here of the. Uh... They had two factories here in Louisville. One was located at 31st and Magazine. The other one was right around the corner at 30th Kentucky. In Louisville. Yeah. Right here in Louisville. Downtown Louisville, those buildings are still there. If you oh, really? Uh, yeah, it's, <clears throat> I don't know what kind of condition they're in, but they're still there. Hmm. And, uh, and this book here is the book that uh, they used in their stores to show clients uh, if they wanted a different style. Yeah, this is the older style. This is a 1941 catalog. I've got catalogs from the 30s all the way through 1959. That's an uh, authentic catalog. That's an original catalog. That's the way it looked. I've got several catalogs that date, uh, that show they're different. Things. But what's common is, like this particular, every year they had this Wildwood Cherry in each of their catalogs from 46 all the way. But, you know, they enjoyed being the largest manufacturer for those several years. But in about 1953, 54, uh, other furniture companies started making furniture in a cheaper way. Right. Places where you didn't notice it. Uh, it still looked shiny and pretty on the outside, but then you notice around the back, they may have had particle board. Dust covers were made out of particle board. Here, can we look at this one here? Maybe you can point yeah. out some of the things you're talking about. Well, just like right here. Let me hold it so this is all wood right here. And it's got the wooden guides here. And that's why this, this particular piece is probably 50, 60 years old. And you can still take one finger, move it in and out, all the way up and down. And that's the way Willett furniture is, and that's why it's got a great reputation. 
I started to say a while ago, it reminds me of a story on those um, drawer guys. I talked to one guy, hard into Willett, when he was at, right after he graduated from high school. All they did all day long was sand these pieces that go on the drawer. That's why they're so smooth. And these are things that they did that you don't readily see, but it's the quality, the highest quality way to do something. And that's why they've always had such a great reputation. They, they always mark their furniture on the drawers, on the back of the piece, because they were proud of what they did. And that's why their tradition, their reputation follows it. And people have uh, followed that reputation for years, even though it was expensive when they made it. People sacrificed to buy it. Right. This is the banquet table. And this is a unique table in that it has a double pedestal with three legs on each pedestal. And they have casters on them. You got two 17 inch leaves here that come out. And what's interesting about this piece is when you take these leaves out, the legs stay stationary. The ends move in and out. So just the top moves. Together. Only the top moves. The legs stay right where they are. And that's an extra precautionary measure to keep your legs stable. Because a lot of times if you're moving the legs around here and there, you could get them caught and they could break them. You know? So that's, that's a good feature. Right. This, so this is a, a high quality table. Oh, nice. this is one of their best tables. I, I mean, I like it the best. But the drop leaf table over here is 44 inches wide, it's got a 15 inch leaf in the center, and it's 86 inches long, right like that. Alright, here's the same table with the leaf out of it. The leaves drop down on the side, and it functions that you could put a, a chair at each end, use it for a breakfast table. They even won a national award with this table in a room setting and they used it behind the sofa as a sofa table. And that was one of their, uh, you know, their interior designers put these right. uh, collections of Willet furniture together. That was one of the functions. They sold more of these tables than any of them. So these tables, all of them, the, ta the tops are all solid cherry, the pedestals are all solid cherry. Everything's solid cherry on these. Right. And these rolls back chairs here, they're very popular. They're, they're solid them. cherry. They're solid cherry, and these roses here, are hand carved. I talked to people who worked in the Willet factories and uh, there was one guy, all he did all day long was carve these roses. So you've got something unique and that's why I really feel good about selling the Willet furniture because for one thing you're, you've got something in your home that's a part of history. Right. This is a history that we're not going to see here in the United States that I can see. Everything now is made in China. We can't afford to have this furniture made here in the United States and this is a thing of the past but it's something that you can hold on to and in my opinion it's going to maintain its value and gain in value because there's not going to be any more of this made. So this, this is all of it. This is uh, the last furniture that will become antiques from the United States. I would think so. There's still a couple of uh, good uh, manufacturers here in the United States but when you get into the cost, you have to be very, very wealthy. Right. They make the very high-end furniture. They make it along the same lines as Willett, but this table here, I can probably sell it for $1,600. That table over there, I could sell for $650. You bought this new American Labor, it would probably run around $20,000. Yeah. That's what you're up against. Yeah. So you can buy this for a a fraction of that and you're going to have something that's going to maintain its value and gain in value. Right. It's one of the best investments a young person could ever make. Right.